Hi, in this video, we'll go through something that is very basic and you have learned this in year 10 IGCSE physics also. So I'm going to power rank through it and I won't go too deep into the detail if you have learned it earlier. You may go back and refer to my IGCSE video that is available on YouTube and you can visit them if you want the details. However, I believe you should know all of them already. So let's get started. The first thing is called the nuclear structure. More precisely, here is more referring to the notation of the nuclear structure. And so, as you know, for a simple atom, there will be proton, neutron, and electron. And there will be some words that you need to recall. For atomic number, it will be same as the proton number. For mass number, it will be same as the nucleon number. Nucleon will refer as proton or neutron just like male and female is under the subset of gender and so in this case we are going to express the different elements of atom with this with this symbol the symbol is having the mass number at the top and the proton number or atomic number at the bottom and therefore hydrogen with one and one means it has one proton and no neutron because one minus one is zero helium will have two proton because there's a two at the bottom and then two neutron because four minus two will equal to two another example for i think calcium is still not a good example actually a good example could be iron iron will have 56 and 26 26 will mean proton and then you can have 56 to be the mass number again proton plus neutron and therefore if you minus it you get 30 30 is the neutron number Okay, so this is something that um, you have learned earlier. This might be a, a new word to you, nuclei. Actually means a nucleus with a specific number of protons and neutrons is called a nuclei. So for example, this hydrogen is the, the most common hydrogen that you can have. There's also a nuclei called hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3, or even hydrogen 4, which are very unstable and could only be made artificially because you cannot find it in nature just because they are unstable so these four hydrogen one to hydrogen four they are all, they are four different kinds of nuclei although they are all hydrogen on the left hand side there's a table for some common fundamental particles that you may encounter and their symbol so for example if you don't know how to express electron is zero negative one uh, which you have learned it in IGCSE once again it is beta decay that you have learned and positron is something new to you and if you heard about antimatter positron is the antimatter of electron for photon which is a gamma decay uh, you will just have the gamma symbol uh, and they contain no mass no proton no neutron and therefore it's zero zero alpha particle i'm sure you know the last two neutrino and Anti-neutrino is something that is new to you, so I'll explain to you in a second. Next is the isotope, and I'm sure you know about it. It's simply as those will have the same atomic number, and that means the same proton, and that means the same element. Because only if you have the same proton, then you could be of the same element. But then they will have a different neutron number. Okay, so for example, like here, the test also mentioned hydrogen 1, 2, 3, or it could be uranium 235, 236, and 238. Right, these will be the isotopes of uranium. Very simple. And now we'll start to talk about the radioactive decay. In year 10 IGCSE physics, again, you have learned about alpha, beta, and gamma decay. And so on the right hand side, here's a table to show you. Um, a statistic okay be careful this is not a relationship like in terms of these two uh, that we find in one single experiment it's actually a statistic so imagine there are hundreds of experiments hundreds thousands of scientists has have tried to do different experiments and making observation and eventually someone tried to collect all these things and merge it into this graph so this is what we can see and uh, one interesting that you may find is you can see on the graph, uh, the stable nuclei is somewhat in the middle, of course. 
And on the left hand side, they will do something called the beta minus decay mostly. On the right hand side, they will do the beta plus decay mostly. So that will kind of balance it back to the middle and get to be stable. Because think about this, for whatever things that are unstable, eventually there may be, of course, in the middle, like in the midway, there might be several reactions, several, you know, things that happen. Eventually, they will become stable, right, for, for no matter what reason, because eventually nothing can be changed further and they will become stable. And so that's why uh, it's usually emerge to the middle. Okay, and what we also find from this is you can see there's a line of n equals to z. That means the atomic number equals to the neutron number. And we find they are not really following this criteria, actually. Like they, they don't have to be equal. And usually uh, we will have more neutron number than the proton number. Okay, it just happen to be in the nature. For all the radioactive decay, again, alpha, beta, and gamma, they are all random and spontaneous. That means, uh, imagine there are like 10, a group or 10 uh, mode of particles that could be radioactive decay. Uh, they don't care about each other, so they, it's just like they are all random and they can emit the particle at the same time. So just like you have 10 modes of dice where you can try to flow them at the same time and uh, whatever number say uh, six like it's a number that you flow and that would be kind of as decayed then you can decay a bunch one six of this group at the same time so it's spontaneous and also random as for the three different kinds of decay alpha particle beta type of particle and gamma ray the ionization power and penetration power are something that we have already mentioned in year 10, so I'm not going to cover again, but you can find there's a table telling you uh, what they actually are because at the beginning, people don't know about them, so it's like naming them A, B, C, uh, but more creatively, so alpha, beta, and gamma, which are found lately to be helium, nucleus, electron, and photon, and these are the charge, mass, and all these different property that you may find. So I'm not going to repeat again. As for the equation itself, uh, you again should know how to write them if you have given the number. Again, don't worry about the elements. You don't have to memorize them. Uh, it's usually provided to you if needed. So the most important thing that you need to know is alpha is four two, and so you just have to balance it. Okay, it's just very simple. Alpha has nothing really new to you. Same as gamma, which uh, you should find even simpia, that has nothing changed. It just changed from a more excited state to a less excited state. So it emits the energy out as a photon, which is a gamma ray. As for the beta decay, there are something new for you to, to learn and remember. Okay, sorry, you have to remember this. So there are two kinds. One is called the beta minus. One is called the beta plus decay. And obviously beta minus is going to emit the one that is negative, which is the electron that you have been learning. Beta plus is something that is new. So it would emit the positive electron, which is positron, we just mentioned earlier. And so it really depends on the nature of that radioactive substance, what they would decay. But the most important thing is, uh, as long as you know it is electron or positron, you need to balance the equation with numbers. That's one thing. The second thing is, you need to know whether it comes with neutrino or antineutrino. So let's have a look here. Uh, for minus the negative one, it will come with a neutrino V with a bar, so that means anti-neutrino. For beta plus, it will come with the one without a bar, that means the neutrino only. So as for now, it would be too much for you if we try to explain why it is this, why it is that. Um, 
the expectation for you right now is simply think of a way to memorize the negative, the beta minus decay will go with the anti-neutrino and beta plus decay will go with the regular neutrino. Pause the video, think about a way to help you to memorize that. A few moments later. Okay, so here's my way of memorizing it. For beta minus, because minus means negative. So it should go with NT because NT something means against something. So kind of negative, I guess. Well, not exactly, but I mean, it's just a story, right? To help you to rem remember. So minus go with NT, while beta plus means positive. So positive go with the one that is, you know, the regular one. So the, the regular neutrino itself. So this is how you can memorize it. Of course, you can use different ways of memorizing it. This is just a suggestion only. And lastly, the decay series. Here is a graph that you need to learn how to read and it's not difficult, it's very simple. So as you know, in the notation, there are only two numbers. One is the atomic number, one is the proton number, and this will be the y and x axis. And so for a certain atom, when it decay, it will go through not just one change, but it could be multiple changes. So let's look at here. Uh, we will have this element go through a alpha decay. We don't need the ledger naturally because you know it decreased A by 4 when it moved from here to here. So it's the mass number reduced by 4, but then the atomic number, the proton number also reduced by 2. So surely you know this is an alpha decay. While for beta minus decay, if you recall the equation itself, you have kind of gained one proton because you have emitted one electron. Actually, that electron and that proton came from one of the neutron. Okay, and so leaving you with one extra proton and that's why you have gained one here. Okay, and maintaining the mass the same because you only emitted the electron which is almost massless not exactly but almost massless and then that's one beta minus decay and here's another minute beta minus decay here's one alpha one alpha one alpha one alpha one beta and here you can see there are two so that means for this particular atom uh, it can only it can go through an alpha or it can also go through a beta minus decay depending on the probability maybe and then eventually go to this the most stable atom which is 208 and 82 so this is something that uh, you should be able to read from the graph to check if you really understand I would like you to try the question question 6 question 7 question 8 9 and that's all pause the video and try it yourself a few moments later Question six, uh, electric charge of the nucleus. Okay, be careful, it's nucleus, not atom, because atom actually include the electron. So for this one, since you know there are two proton, one proton is one plus, and therefore this is two plus, simply, two positive, if you like to say. Seven, eight, state what it meant by the term isotope. So uh, like we said, same proton number, but then different neutron number part b it asks you to state two ways in which the these two isotope will be different from each other other than having different neutrons of course um well i guess the first thing that you may call is they have then have different mass because obviously one has a bit greater mass number and uh, that of course will affect physically if you want to uh, accelerate them or if you try to calculate I don't know the kinetic energy that may affect uh, the result so different mass and you may also say they will be of different volume or different radius also so that's something you could mention and uh, lastly you may also want to talk about the stability because usually uh, one will be more stable than the other and of course, the one that you know, the most abundant one is 16, that one, uh, the most commonly found. Well, for the 18, I believe is the one that is rather unstable. 
question next so here we've got an element i don't even know what it is but it doesn't really matter because it asks you to draw the equation which is the beta minus decay so obviously you just have to balance the number so for electron of course you have to recall beta minus is the electron and that is zero negative one and so i to be honest i don't know what elements it will become it will obviously become another one which has the number of 210 at the top still but then 84 at the bottom so it's obviously another proton number so i'll just call it x if you'd like to check it out with the periodic table go ahead and do so but then in the real ib physics exam they won't ask you to recall that they probably will provide you or just name it as x and so uh let's not forget the new thing that you learn in IB physics is there's a neutrino or anti-neutrino so according to what we have just talked about for this negative electron you have anti-neutrino so the symbol is something like that oh i almost overlooked there is a gamma emission also so uh, we just have to add gamma there if you like to add zero zero that's fine but then it's not really necessary number nine is simply plutonium all right with the given number let's cut let's just copy it and then uh change with an alpha decay so let's draw alpha four two and so you have the number that is two three five and 92 again just balance left hand side and right hand side for for this one for sure that i know because you should remember what 235 is and that is simply uranium so that should be it